Happy Monday. So glad that you are with us on this day after Daylight Savings Time. We all love Daylight Savings Time. Woohoo, although it's hard to get up for church. I just had that. Did you get up for church? I, should... I didn't even know the clocks changed. Like I had to, like I was like, I had no idea. Like Jake was there. I was like, I looked down, it was like my kitchen clock. I said, Oh, that's why, because I never I wake it's up early. I had no idea. Here on the air. I had no idea. To church? I did, we were just a little late. Okay, <laughs> all yes, right. We all right. Oh, we made it. We made it. I'm not sure we were all bright and cheery or anything, but we made it. But uh, we have a great program coming up here on Hope Today. Amanda, tell us about it. That's right. So we have Brooke McLaughlin. You are going to want to stick around for this interview. She's going to talk to us about peace. Hmm. Did you know it's not a feeling? It's not an emotion? She's going to talk to us how we can literally walk in that peace every moment of our life. And that's important, guys. I'm like in the season we're in and things in the world the way they are, to be able to walk in that peace. Wow. It's really important to understand like peace from a biblical perspective. And I know there was a lot of things over the weekend with the Silicon Valley bank collapse and just different things happening in the government and things of that sort. So I think it is so important that we know that in our nation, nation and around the world and in our culture, things are going to get darker. But it's so important for us to have a proper viewpoint of what Jesus is calling us to be. And I just want to share this quick story of just what happened at my home church uh, this weekend, which was amazing. It was like a sign of wonder and miracle. So we had um, the spirit just started like breaking out and Pastor Miracle read she was preaching and there was a one moment she started prophesying over this one young man named Jason and then she called out this other young man and his name just happened to be Jason and the, she's like the mother is like start praying together and they worked at the same job and at the end of the service I kid you not she's called out she's like God's highlighting this other young man his name was Jason as well it was three generations oh, wow. and Jason means healer we found out like that's what the name means and so I just wanted to share that quick little story with such like an inspiration to my spirit and just want to encourage you today that no matter what upheaval is going around, no matter what your situation is, God's eyes are on you. So he is the healer. But I just had to share that. I was just like, whoo! That's, that's a good story. <laughs> uh, and, and so many things try to uh, rob us of our peace. But, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I'm teaching through 2 Timothy right now at church. And Paul, in the first three, uh, three times of the first like 15 verses says, suffer with me. And I'm like, wow, that's not something we really hear or talk about too much. But having peace, even in the midst of all that suffering and all that, that thing, mm -hmm. that, that's, that is a, a valuable thing to know. Well, right now we're going to play a little game we do called Stump the Hosts. Okay, we've been doing pretty good lately. Uh, we have not seen these, and uh, we don't, you know, we're going to, when, when I read it, you're going to hear it for the first time, just like we do, so play along with us. So here's the first question. Which king allowed the Israelites to return from exile to their own land? Is this Nehemiah? Is this the king? It's the well, king, so I was going to see either it, Cyrus but I was going to say King Darius, as uh, Xerxes, but that was I think it's, Esther. That was Esther. That was Xerxes. Esther. So they didn't return. Gonna, they just killed everybody. Cyrus. Cyrus. Don't you think it's Cyrus? I think Here it's like Let's go with Cyrus. Cyrus. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <laughs> and he was the king of Persia. And that's from the book of Ezra. That's Here right. we go. All right. <gasps> Question number two. Are you ready? <laughs> Do we have a lifeline? <laughs> <laughs> Which prophet said he was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter. I'm gonna say maybe Jeremiah. I think that's Isaiah. I think it's Isaiah. I'm, what do you think? You're the, Isaiah. you're gonna go with, let's go with, uh, let's go with Isaiah. I was right, I was right. I was right. Right, you I know what it's like. Oh my goodness, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, Sid. It's all right, it's all right. It's all right. Can I get uh, the sprinkle joy? Because I got it right. Okay. Can I get it, Larry? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> all right, here's the last question. How many pillars of wisdom are there according to the book of Proverbs? Guys, I know this. Uh, there's seven. Wisdom has hewn out her seven pillars. Amen. Seven. Yay! All right. That's awesome. <laughs> all right. Oh, that Thanks was sore. Playing. I'm like, Sorry, man. Sid. It's okay, you guys. <laughs> I am the Bible wizard. I have it all. Just She's kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just She's kidding. You got to download it. <laughs> I almost said the Bible wizard, but that'd be so. She's like the Matrix over doctor. here. They just <laughs> download the Bible into her head. Oh, gosh. <laughs> She's well prepared. Well, we all want peace in our lives, but sometimes it can be challenging to pray for peace when you're not in a prayerful state of mind, and it seems like your whole world is spinning out of control. 
Brooke McLaughlin is our next guest, and she is the founder of Million Praying Moms. She's also an author, and in her new devotional, Every Prayers for Peace, she encourages everyone on how to make peace their prayer priority this year. Brooke, it's great to have you with us on Hope Today. Thank you so much for having me. Good Monday morning. Absolutely. Man, we should have pulled you in. Did you know that was Jeremiah? <laughs> I, I actually was rooting for Isaiah as well, so I, I would have gotten that wrong. <laughs> All of our thoughts. I was just like, Isaiah 53, it's got to be him. Well, talk to us about this piece and how it's not an emotion or a feeling. I felt like that challenged my own thinking. Yeah, I loved that. When we came up with that, when we had that realization, I feel like it was one of the deepest, most profound truths of this entire, you know, of, of this entire process of trying to find peace. Because if peace is not a feeling, what in the world is it? It's something we feel, right? I mean, we feel it uh, in our in our heads, we feel it in our hearts, we feel it in our physical bodies. When I don't have peace, I I feel my heart rate increases my my blood pressure maybe goes up there it, it it does feel like a feeling and so if it's not what is it but what we learned from galatians 5 is that peace and all the other fruit of the spirit love joy peace patience all of them they're fruit not feelings and so for the believer this is really good news because if you have jesus you already have at least a seed of peace living inside of you and if it is a seed then the good news is that it can be grown we can we can prune it we can love it we can feed it we can learn more about it we can grow it in our everyday lives and so i found this to just be the very best news that i don't have to wait for that feeling of peace because let's just be honest our circumstances are never they're always going to be up and down and up and down all over the place. There will always be something in your life that is threatening to steal your peace if you're looking for it in your circumstances. But if we're looking for it from a biblical perspective, we can find it, we can hang on to it, and we can grow it. And that gives me so much hope. There was a word that you had um, with one of your children in one of the devotions, and it had to do with the ocean. And um, I believe the title was like, when you feel like you've lost your strength. But talk to our mm -hmm. viewers and us about the imagery of the ocean. Yeah, we love to go to the ocean. And every time, actually, we just love water uh, in particular. I, I'll take the ocean or the lake or, or just whatever, but I prefer the ocean. And every time we go, uh, since my boys were little, they're teenagers now. I have a senior in high school, so we're you know in a different season. But when they were little, uh, and still today, I would tell them, listen to the ocean. Just pause for a minute. I know you want to go out and surf the waves, but just listen for a second. Look at it. Listen to it. Take it in. The Bible tells us that God's voice is like many waters. This is about as close as we can get to actually physically hearing the audible voice of God. Now, listen to it, but look at it how powerful it is. Those waves knock you around. And I sometimes have to, sometimes the current is so strong that I have to come and walk down the beach because it has moved you away from me. And I have to have you come back so that I can see you. If it can move you right here on the beach where you can get your footing, how much more powerful is it out in the deep, deep waters? The strength of God is like the deep, deep waters. Scripture uses water to help us understand the character of God and the depth and the power of who he is. And that's an image that, that has been very meaningful to me. And I wanted to give it to my children early on so that every time they see or hear the water, they instantly think, this is like the voice of God. This is the power of God. This is the strength of God. It's that physical reminder. Amen. I Even in reading that, I was just thinking of how vast the ocean is and how big our God is. And I know we've yes. taught that at Children's Church. Your problems are little and God is so big. And how that does give our little hearts peace and my adult heart. But you talk about serving others and how that can lead to peace. 
Yeah, absolutely. So we we lived in one house for about 14 years, and we had the privilege of having some neighbors that uh, we were able to lead to Christ. We prayed for them for about seven or eight years before they actually started coming to church with us and, and gave their lives to Christ. And that was such a privilege for us. Wow. But we found that serving them, not just, I mean, they were our physical neighbors. So it was in a very real sense, love thy neighbor physically. But even beyond that, we found that if we could look for ways to serve other people, that we were laying a foundation of peace in our relationships with them. So for example, one Sunday, we were in home group with our our neighbors and uh, one of our neighbors was saying that life had been really stressful and his his grass, his his yard had gotten out of control. And we had noticed it because it was unlike him to allow his his yard to get as tall as it was. And so they didn't come straight home after home group. And my husband and I drove into our driveway and we just looked at each other and we knew what we needed to do. And so my husband on a Sunday, which here here in, in Appalachia, like we don't mow on Sundays, but we felt like this was a this was a good reason to to break that rule. My husband got out the lawnmower and push mowed his entire yard for him. And when they got home that day to a freshly mowed yard, we were all peeking out the window looking at him and he just started to cry. And it was a way that we could serve and love our neighbor at a point where they needed it. And if we would do that more, just look for ways to serve out of an abundance of love for Christ and love for others, we are laying a foundation of peace uh, so that when storms come, as all relationships have, you know, have that moment when they come, we have that foundation to build on. It makes life easier when things get tough. That's a great story, Brooke. I love that one about mowing the grass. But let, let me ask you about, now we're going to have tribulation in the world. Uh, it could be in our family, it could be at work or in the church. Uh, I think work's a big one for a lot of people. Uh, you know, what do we do to bring that peace? How can we be that peace when it's maybe happening around us or maybe we're right in the middle of it? Right. I think, you know, you're referring to John 16, 33, where Jesus says, in this world, you will have trouble. Um, and I think sometimes we get surprised when things are not going well. And scripture tells us we should not be surprised when, when we have troubles, when we, when we <laughs> encounter trials of many kinds, because we are going to have that happen, especially as believers. But it's really how we deal with it that is the important part. My family and I went through something stressful just this weekend. And so as we look to scripture, knowing that we're going to have trouble, then we have to try and tease out, okay, God, what should our response to that be? be. And I have found a beautiful response that we can use in the moment in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. A lot of your listeners will know that this is where, where we're being told, do not be anxious for anything, but go to God and ask him for what you need. And when you do, the peace of God will, will uh, guard your hearts. And, you know, I don't think that the Scriptures give us a lot of formulas, but I do believe that God gives us promises and that if we act as if those promises are true, if we live those promises in our daily lives, then God will meet us there. So when I find myself in a stressful situation, just like I did this weekend, <clears throat> then I'm going to remember that verse. And one of the things that I immediately do is try and recognize the signs of anxiety or stress or a lack of peace in my body. As I mentioned earlier, my heart rate goes up when I'm stressed out or or anxious about something. Uh, sometimes I'll start to get a little bit shaky, like I'm looking for a physical response. And I'll just tell it to stop. Stop. Scripture says, be anxious for nothing. Stop. And it's a, it's a sign. Sometimes I say it out loud. Sometimes I say it internally, depending on where I am. But it's a sign to my body and my mind and my heart that we're not going to continue in this in this way that we're going. It's a it's a marker that says stop. We're not doing this. And then I'm going to do what the rest of the verse says. I'm going to take this to the Lord and I'm going to say, Lord, I'm I'm stressed about this. I'm stressed about that. I'm experiencing anxiety about this, about that. Will you come, Lord, and give me peace in this moment? You are my peace, Father. Help me to reorient myself so that I can see 
not just my circumstances, but the God of peace that I belong to. Will you come now, Lord, and give me your peace? And will you guard my heart with it? And guys, there has never been a time when I have asked the Lord to do that for me, that he hasn't done it. Now, I'm not saying that it always comes immediately. Sometimes I have to go through this process multiple times. Sometimes like Jacob, I have to wrestle with God a little bit and just refuse to get up until he gives me peace. But he does, and he is faithful to his word. And there, when we, when we approach him and we live like we believe his word is true, then he comes and he does what he promises. Amen. Those are such powerful words for each of us today. You know, I, it sounds to me like it's a choice, like love is a choice, peace is a choice, joy is a choice. But, you know, if you had to explain to a new Christian what God is our peace really means, you know, what would you say to them? I think it just starts in our basic understanding of who God is, what he did for us, and who his son is. Before we come to Christ, we are not at peace with God. In fact, the Bible says that we are enemies of God. When we come to Christ, we don't just get salvation. We get peace between us and God because of Jesus. And there's all kinds of fruit of that and other benefits that come from that amazing gift. But the first step in being able to have any kind of peace in this world whatsoever is recognizing that it comes from your relationship with God in the person of Jesus Christ. We have to find our peace in him. And so if we don't know him, then that's the first step. We have to embrace him and believe him at his message. Amen. Can you talk to us about this mental exercise that has helped you, you know, have more peace in trying times you know, and, and like, mm -hmm. what do you do when you find yourself asking, why me? I just started trying to flip that because, you know, I, I'm just going to confess to you guys. I ask that question often. It goes back to what I said earlier about the fact that we really shouldn't be surprised when we encounter trials of many kinds because Jesus told us we would. Um, but I think we are conditioned sometimes to think that we're the only ones who have to go through something. And that's a lie. The body of Christ is big and vast. And I promise you that there is someone else out there who has been through what you have been through in some, some like manner. And so instead of asking myself, instead of allowing myself to have a pity party and say, why me, Lord, why are you doing this to me? Why are you not being good to me, Lord? I've tried to flip the switch a little bit and say, well, why not me? What is it about me that exempts me from, from any of this? Why should, why should God not be at work in my life this way? Why should I not have to learn to trust him in this way? Can I not look back on my life and see his hand in the hard spaces of my life and how he has taught me and given me more of himself in the midst of those things. And it just helps me to embrace those things that God allows into my life that might not have been what I would have chosen. You mentioned in your book about joining the Million Praying Moms Initiative. Can you talk to me about what this is that God has put in your heart? Absolutely. I'm so passionate about prayer because prayer is what saved me in my young motherhood. I had two children who were very out of the box, uh, you know, big personality children, and God used them to kick my feet out from under me in all the right ways. And I turned to him in prayer out of desperation for him to do something in our home. I came to him initially because I wanted him to change my children. And what started happening is I prayed his word back to him is that God changed my heart. And so my passion is that I could help moms understand that prayer is not a last resort. It is not what you do when you can't do anything else. It is the first and best response to the challenges of motherhood. It is God's extension of relationship to us saying, would you come partner with me in the raising of these children? Would you ask me for wisdom and let me give it? Would you ask me what to do and let me show you the right path? You don't have to do this alone. I have a plan for you. I have a plan for your children. And if you'll ask me, I'll show it to you. So it's been my privilege to be able to come alongside moms and help them take the next step in whatever that prayer journey might be for them in learning to pray God's word for their children. 
Amen. Brooke, would you mind just praying over all of us, all the moms, the dads, just the children of God, because we all desperately need to walk in the peace of God. Amen. I will do that. Lord, thank, thank you. you so much for your gift of peace. Father, I know that there may be someone listening right now who is experience, experiencing a distinct lack of peace. They're struggling to find you in the midst of whatever life circumstance they're going through. And Lord, I want to acknowledge that there are people who have serious struggles right now that where it's really hard to find you and it's really hard to, to stay tuned in. But Father, help us, please, all of us, to be able to see that you you are our peace and that no matter what shifting sands might happen no matter what ha no matter what kind of storm we might find ourselves in if we keep our eyes on you like peter when he was walking on the waves toward jesus if we keep our eyes on you we will not sink father today i pray that you would help us to keep our eyes on you in jesus name amen amen thank you brooke so much for being with us today on hope today Thank you for having me. Well, stay with us because when we return, we're going to unpack a scripture that will help us seek peace that God desires for our lives. We'll be right back. Hey, Tom, what you doing? Oh, I can't find anything good on YouTube to watch. The commentaries, the blogs, the tier videos, the gaming videos, it's all boring. Oh, have you thought about subscribing to Cornerstone's YouTube channel? Cornerstone has a YouTube channel? Of course it does. Hold on, taking a pause to remind you to subscribe to our channel. Hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Now back to the video. I'll show you how to subscribe. Just search for Cornerstone Television Network and hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date getting filled with the Holy Spirit with consistent uploads every day. Keep up with your favorite moments and never miss a beat. Will you help us as we race to 100,000 subscribers? We can't do it without your help. The content is never ending with countless hours of entertainment. So subscribe to the Cornerstone YouTube channel today. Hope happens here. We're glad that you're tuned into Hope today. We just wrapped up our conversation with Brooke McLaughlin about peace. And one thing just being reminded of is I think about the Hebrew word of shalom, which shalom means nothing damaged, nothing broken, nothing missing. And God wants all of us to encounter, to experience his peace because peace is a person and that peace is Jesus. That's something that I've learned in my life. I was walking through a really rough season, going through some stormy seas, and I remember listening to this song, and it just reminded me about how peace is Jesus. And so Jesus is our Prince of Peace. And like always, we have a scripture to go with us today for our show today. So we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23, and you're probably very familiar with it. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. And as we've been reading this scripture and as meditating on, you know, something Tom and Amanda that God just really dropped in my spirit is just thinking it in a different way is that it's a fruit of the spirit. We're all called to be trees. So what fruit is hanging off of you today? I think a lot of times we like to say, well, I have joy and I have peace and I have this. But one thing that God was just putting in my spirit, the fruit is not for us. It's for others. It's to serve others. How can we give someone the fruit of love? How can we give someone the fruit of joy? How can we give someone the fruit of peace? That's just what God put on my heart. Tom, what are your thoughts? Well, I, I love the, the illustration of the fruit and us being the trees because all the tree has to do is plant itself in the right soil and it bears. It doesn't have to go, oh, I got to make an apple here. Oh, it's really hard. No, it doesn't do it that way. It just makes an apple. It just naturally does that. And that's what we're supposed to do, guys, as natural as can be, be Christians living out that natural thing of, of bearing fruit. Those are the things. Now, there's no law against those things because they're all good things. And so just as, as we just put our branches out, yeah. let the fruit just come. I love the thought of like us being plugged into God. 
Like, because people are like, well, how can I bear good fruit? You know, in our life, we may have not bared good fruit. We may have bared some rotten stuff. But when you change what your source is, and I'm talking about meeting Jesus, the personage of peace, when you hang out with God, that is basically John 15, abiding abiding with him it's only way we cannot bear fruit in and of ourselves and if we do it oftentimes is rotten it might look good on the outside but man i'm like let's be real we're like a can of dog food <laughs> it's like you open it up and oh boy i didn't expect all of that you know it's the way relationships are you get to know people in your life and you're like oh my like, I didn't know that. And that's the reality of our humanity. But God is asking us to have that divine relationship with him. And as we sit with him, as we partake of his word, and he fills us, oh my goodness, the miracle happens, Sydney and Tom, that we can begin to bear fruit that emanates his personage. And that is the beautiful thing, this amazing relationship that God himself has invited you to. And it's exciting. I mean, yes, life is topsy-turvy. The reality is we're in a fallen world, but God Almighty has placed your feet when you choose him on a firm foundation, the rock of Christ, the rock on which I stand. And you can have the peace of God no matter what you walk through. And this is the joy as a child of God that each of us has. You know, Amanda, as you're just talking, one thing I just heard God saying is that some of you need to change the soil you are in because you can't produce certain things like certain plants, like if you're a succulent plant or like a palm tree, you have to be in the right soil. And the right soil is in Jesus. And sometimes we put ourselves in environments and situations that will choke out our fruit. So we just want to encourage you today. Maybe your peace fruit isn't growing because you have planted yourself in some situations that God has not called you to or your love fruit, whatever it may be, just ask God, what do I need to do to change my soil so that I can be rooted in you? I love that scripture that he says like, abide in me and I will abide in you. You know, I, I think about that. If you plant in the right soil, when the storms come, you know, there's apple trees that branches have broken off of, they still produce apples. They've been through the storm, see? They've been through the storm. They've even got a little few scars here and there. But they heal themselves. They produce the right fruit. Be one of those today that's going to produce the right fruit. How do you do that? Like Sydney said, stay in the right soil with Jesus. On tomorrow's Hope Today, learn how to let Jesus redeem the broken pieces of your marriage. Speaker and author Dana Gresh offers insight on how to forgive and fight for your marriage so you can be a part of God's redemption story. That's tomorrow on Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.